Welcome back to the epic Final Fantasy Let's Play. We're here in Final Fantasy Kill Yourself. I mean, Final Fantasy 2. Where, uh, you know, things are difficult. I don't know. This, this game is weird. It's not like it's necessarily difficult. It's just... What's the right word? Like... Unro un I don't know. I don't even know what to say about this game. It's like... It just surprises you. It's like, you think you know what you're doing, and then the game's just like, nah, you know what you're doing. They hide super strong enemies in weird places. They... It's just... They had a different way of, of wrangling you in this game. Every video game has a way of, like, keeping you on track. You know, like... Old video games usually would just, like... Like, for example, Final Fantasy 1, you would need a certain item to get to the next area. So, if you didn't have that item, you couldn't get to the next area. So, the only place you could go is the place you're supposed to go, which has enemies that are around the level that you are. In newer games, it's always, you know, someone on the radio going, Hey, you gotta go here. Hey, you gotta go there. Hey, you gotta go here. Hey, why are you going trying to go in there? That's not where you're supposed to go. You're supposed to go here. But in this game, they decided to just place really difficult enemies in the places you're not supposed to go. So, which, you know, isn't the worst thing ever. There's games that have done that before, like Dark Souls does that. A lot of, a lot of games allow you to go to areas you're not supposed to, but you'll just get wrecked by the really strong enemies. And that's a really cool idea because it makes you want to get stronger so that you can go to that area. Uh, a great example of this that I talked about last time was Final Fantasy XII. I think I talked about it last time. Uh, in Final Fantasy XII, there's this giant T-Rex that, like, walks around the beginning area. And if you try to fight it, you get wrecked. So you're like, oh man, I want to get strong so that one day I can come back here and kill that T-Rex. And when you do get strong enough and you come back and kill the T-Rex, you feel, like, awesome. And you feel like you actually accomplished something. And you feel like you've truly, like, gotten stronger. So... It's not that, like, it's a bad idea. The problem is that this is an original Final Fantasy RPG where you there's no autosaving. You have to save the game manually whenever you want to quit playing. So it becomes a real issue when you haven't saved in a while because you think the way you're going is the correct way and then suddenly you run into some fight where everything obliterates you. And I'm not talking about, like, you know, they're really strong. I'm talking about legitimately annihilates your party in an instant. I mean, no chance. Like, every single time I've run into one of those fights, I've tried to one run away, and I still have not successfully done it. You just get completely trashed. So, it, you know, it comes off as kind of unfair, you know? But, um, what we're gonna do today, there's this enemy that we got wrecked by last time, some giant tortoise thing, and, uh, my goal is to do a little bit of, uh, grinding here. Not, like, not necessarily, like, a big grinding session, but I'm just gonna take my time and get everything on this first level, and then I'm gonna go back to the town and, uh, like, heal up. And by the time I make it all the way to the town, and then back here, I should be should be a lot stronger. Um, I also read someone posted a comment um, saying to use magic, which makes sense because it's a tortoise, so obviously it's going to have like high defense and not as much magic defense. So I'm going to try to level up my magic or something. I don't know. Um, and by the way, about comments, I wanted to stress, because I get this all the time, like, and, and I, I, I know I've discussed this before, but just to, you know, beat a dead horse into the ground, um, I don't like comments that tell me how to play the game, okay? Like, I completely understand if I'm doing something completely wrong, and you're like, hey, you're an idiot, this is how you do that, and that's fine, but... I get comments all the time on my stream and on the videos that it's like, hey, you can do this later, and hey, you should be doing this, and it's like, just let, 
The point of this Let's Play isn't to be like the expert on Final Fantasy 2. The, the point of this Let's Play is to give you an impression of what Final Fantasy 2 is when a newcomer plays it. That's the goal of this Let's Play. This Let's Play is to be like, you know, this is what Final Fantasy 2 is. To anyone that played it when they were younger, this is what the game is. It's not about trying to, you know, beat this game as hard as possible and show you guys how to play it correctly. That's not that's not what this Let's Play is about. I would rather make mistakes to show off the flaws in this game rather than do everything right and then make you think that the game is easier than it is or that the game isn't played, you know, like this, or etc. And speaking of which, uh, I get comments all the time as well about the glitch where if you apparently if you queue up an attack and then cancel the attack, uh, you still get the experience for it. Because the experience in this game works differently than normal RPGs, or at least normal Final Fantasy games, where it's not about getting the experience after the fight, although you do, I think, right? No, I guess not. Um, so, apparently, you don't get, like, level ups. Like, our characters don't have levels, I don't think, right? No. Um, instead, every time you use something like an attack or a magic attack, you get experience for that thing, and then it levels up. So, like, for example, the magic, which someone explained this to me, and I'm glad they did. Uh, so the one is the, the level of it, so it's cure one. If I had cure two, it would do more curing. If I had fire two, it would be, do more damage. And then the second number is the percent of which I am to, like, to getting level two. So right now I'm 4%. Uh, from getting to Cure 2. And if I were to use Cure on something, which I don't want to do, I'll use Fire. That 4% should go up to whatever, 5%, 6%, until I level it up all the way. And also, using my magic should increase my MP. So I need to be using magic with Maria as much as I can, because she has, like, absolutely no MP right now. So yeah, and, and people have commented all the time about this glitch you can do to where you just pretend to use an attack and then you don't, and it will level up all of your stuff so you can like instantly get to like super level right away. And I'm not going to do that because first of all, it's a glitch, which I'm not trying to like pull off glitches, I'm trying to just show you how the let's play is. But second of all, that would ruin the let's play, um, and we don't want to do that. So. Yeah, okay, so I got 3% for using it once. So that's cool. I'm glad someone explained it. See, like, that kind of thing is okay to explain. Because, like, I asked, I was like, what does this mean? And then someone explained it, and now I know. So that's great. And that doesn't, like, ruin the game or anything. That just helps us understand the game a little better. So. But I appreciate everyone's comments, regardless of what they are. I just ask that you don't try to spoil the game for me, or try to tell me how to play the game. Because, like I said, this is... This is, like... The Idiot's Guide to Final Fantasy 2. That's that's what my Let's Play is. It's the watch this idiot play this game and get wrecked. That's my goal with this Let's Play. It's not to if you want to watch, you know, how to play Final Fantasy 2, then go watch, you know, a guide on Final Fantasy 2. Go read the wiki page. Go watch a speedrun or something. Um, that's not what we're about here. We're about playing the game for the first time, seeing how these old retro games hold up today, that kind of thing. Plus, I never got to experience these as a kid. I never owned any of these Final Fantasies. I started with Final Fantasy VII. So, um, you know, I, I, had a, I had an NES. I skipped the Super NES. We had an NES for the entire lifespan of the NES and the SNES. Um, we never, we didn't have, I don't think it was really a money thing. It was just... My dad bought me an NES, and then we were pretty content with the NES, we really liked it, and I only ever played it when I went over to my dad's, so it was like, we just played it and loved it, and we didn't find any reason to buy another one, that we probably didn't even know the SNES really existed, and then, like, one day, you know, way later for one of my birthdays, my dad bought me a PS1, and that, like, changed my life. So we, but we never played the Super Nin Nintendo. I missed out on the Super Nintendo Final Fantasies that did come out here, um, and then obviously all the ones that were only in Japan, all, we all missed out on. So, uh, 
Is there like an inn? Yeah. So yeah, that's... It's... The reason I wanted to do this Let's Play is so that we could we could relive these old Final Fantasies and see if they're still if they still hold up, the problems they had, the innovations they made, those kind of things. So yeah, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're watching Let's Play. I'm glad to see that a lot of people are continuing to follow the Let's Play since the first one. I do plan on playing all of them. Um, I get asked that all the time as well. I want a long sword, a battle axe. I'll buy one of these long swords. There's a Furion. So, um, so yeah, I get I get questions all the time. Like, are you ever gonna play Final Fantasy VIII? Are you ever gonna play Final Fantasy VI? Are you ever gonna play Final Fantasy Twelve? Yes. I'm, I, I plan on playing all of them. Bronze mail. Can she equip this stuff? Because she's like... Nice. I was afraid that she would only be able to equip, like, girly stuff. Like in Final Fantasy 1. Where the black mage can only equip, like, robes. It's really obnoxious. Um... So yes, I do plan on playing through all the Final Fantasies. Hopefully it doesn't take us forever. I know Final Fantasy 1 took a really long time. Um, and that's because that was... I, I played Final Fantasy 1 at a time that I was not doing this for a living. And I was playing... Or I was working like one and a half jobs. And trying to do this. And, you know, it was difficult. Um, difficult to get out videos at a, like, normal pace. So, now that I do this pretty much for a living, thanks to the awesome people on my Twitch and the awesome people who have signed up for the Patreon, you guys have shown me so much amazing support. Did I save? I, I did, didn't I? I'm gonna save again. Yeah, I just saved, like, a second ago. Sometimes when I'm talking about stuff, I forget what I just did. Um, but yeah, thanks to the amazing people who have supported me, I'm basically doing this for a living now. That's why you're seeing, you know, uh, the Final Fantasy VII tutorial videos. They used to be like every two months. Now I have another one coming up hopefully this week. Um, which by the time you see it, well, this episode you'll probably see like today or tomorrow. So yeah, hopefully I have a new uh, in-depth video coming out either this week or the beginning of next week. Um, and then right after that, I have another video um, that's going to be, uh, that's a video request that someone sent me um, that signed up for the Patreon for the uh, amount to get a video request and asked me to do a video on my top 10 favorite Final Fantasy 7 tracks. I talked about that last time though, so you guys have already heard about that. But, um, but yeah, um, so thanks to you guys. I've been able to do, put a lot more work and effort into this stuff and that should also translate to me getting out these Final Fantasy Let's Play videos more often. So um, hopefully we get through Final Fantasy 2 a lot quicker than we did Final Fantasy 1. And hopefully there won't be a giant wait in between Final Fantasy 2 and Final Fantasy 3. Um, there might be a little bit of a wait because I have to figure out how I'm going to record Final Fantasy 3. Um, I think the most original-ish version I can get is the one I have on the DS, which means I need to record my DS, which is a, a, a strange thing to do. Um, you can send it off to get it like modded so it can be re um, recorded. And I've always wanted to do that because there's also another DS game, a few DS games that I want to record and play. One of which I want to speed run. There's another one that I want to play because it was donated to me. So. Um, that might be what I'm doing. There's also like a Steam version, but apparently it's really updated, and I don't want to do that. This Let's Play is supposed to be for more of the, the original games. So, um... Yeah, hopefully we can figure that out and there's not like a big delay. I was going to do a little bit more grinding at the... Um, at the town, but... Maybe I'll... Hmm. 
I want to use some magic with Maria so that when we get into this fight with this tortoise, she actually has, like, enough. Well, if I save my MP, then she'll have enough. Does Mindu have, like, any damaging spells? Not really. I wonder if I gave her, like, a fire scroll or something, if she could, like, use fire. She should be able to, right? I mean, freaking Furion can. In fact, I think he has one now, doesn't he? You, we could buy one, though. Yeah, we should do that. All right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grind a little bit, try to get some MP on Maria. And then I'll buy like a fire scroll and give it to maybe like a bolt scroll. And I'll give it to Mindu. Which speaking of Mindu, Mindu is a uh, guy. I don't know why I thought Mindu was a girl. I don't know what 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 strange reason. Like, if you look at Mindu's picture, it's like obviously a guy. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm nuts. So... Uh, we have some questions. I, want, I uh, thank you all for leaving questions. Um, you can leave questions in the comments below as you're watching the Let's Play on any of the episodes. And I will answer them the next time I play. Um, usually I record like four episodes at a time. So if you ask, uh, you should see your answers within the next four episodes. Um, so let's answer some of these while we're grinding. A lot of people left some cool questions. I appreciate it. Oh, Maria just got rectified. Oh yeah, and someone said that if you hit up, you can cast on like an entire group, which is cool. I wonder if it does the same thing as it does in a lot of Final Fantasies, where if you cast on everyone, it does less. Like, if you cast on one, it'll do, like, 50 damage. If you cast on, like, three, then they'll all do, like, 20 damage or something. But there's no way to really know until we do it. So, first question here, uh, Tropton. It's your boy, Tropton. He asked, what game do you love to hate? A game that you love so much, even though it's hard as crap, or there's just something about it that infuriates you to know it. Hmm. Question. Don't hit Maria. What game do I love to hate? I'm trying to think of what game I play a lot that I get mad at. Yeah, it definitely looks like I did less damage because I hit all the goblins. I'm going to do it again though, just to get more MP. Um, it's like, this should do more damage. Well, it might it might have do still done less damage because I said to hit all, even though there was only one left. Cool, so she got, she got MP and magic there. Uh, one game that I know I get mad at a lot is Dark Souls. I don't really get mad at it that much now that I've played it so long. But especially when I first started playing it, I'd get mad at it, like, all the time. And I still really enjoyed playing it. Hmm. What other games do I get mad at? I get mad at a lot of games. Uh. I think Call of Duty was definitely one of those. Um. A lot of times, when I would play Call of Duty, especially alone, I would just get so frustrated. I, like... It's one of those games that you get really emotionally attached to the game. 
and you just, when you die over and over again, you get like so frustrated, but you keep playing it anyways. And it's almost like, it's almost like you can get your frustrations out on the game. Like you love to hate the game because you could have like a bad day or something and just like come home and just get like real angry at this video game. And then, uh, you know, you feel better about the rest of your day. Because it was really the video game that just made you mad. Uh, League of Legends is like that for me too sometimes. Only sometimes though. When you play like three games in a row and you have someone that legitimately just BMs for literally no reason just because they're a jerk and they want to. You like, you hate playing it because people are jerks, but you keep playing it because, you, you know, you want to. But I wouldn't say I love to hate it, you know what I mean? Like, I understand what you're asking. You're not asking, like, what game makes you mad. You're asking, like, what game makes you mad, but you continue to play it because you kind of love to hate it. I think Dark Souls would be a good example, where it's like, you love the fact that it's so damn hard that it's making you mad, because you know one day you'll beat it, and you'll be happy. Like, someone, someone commented, Cyborg commented, uh, replied to that and said Super Meat Boy, like Super Meat Boy is a good example for a lot of people get really mad at it but still love to play it. I'm trying to think, I feel like there's at least one other game that I play all the time even though I get mad at it. But I can't think of it. We're gonna die again. What else? Pablo asked. He said, Hello, Death. Love your Final Fantasy playthroughs. Thanks, Pablo. He asked, Which is your favorite Final Fantasy game besides Final Fantasy VII? I usually say Final Fantasy X. I'd probably stick with that. Um, it didn't always used to be my second favorite, though. When I was growing up, my second favorite was Final Fantasy IX. Um, I really enjoyed Final Fantasy IX when I played it the first time, and going back to it, I still really enjoy it. I really love the art style. Really everything about that game is just great. I, I really love the the ability system as well, which is kind of a mixed bag with a lot of people, but I, I really like it. Um, and Final Fantasy X, I liked it when it came out a lot, but I still considered Final Fantasy IX my favorite, my second favorite. But, um... After playing it more, and after doing challenge runs of it, and after expl like exploring the lore a lot, uh, it's become my second favorite. Um, they just they put so much time and effort into that game, and you just don't see that very much anymore. Um, these old Final Fantasy RPGs, you could tell they put a lot of heart and soul into them. You know, they they took the time to flush out every city and all the enemies back in the day when it wasn't as easy to do that. And then there's new games now that it just seems like, like, I always use Destiny as an example, okay? And I'm sorry for anyone that watches my Final Fantasy Let's Play that loves Destiny, but I absolutely hate that game. And it's not because, because I, I played it a long time and I enjoyed it, but I hate it because you know, Destiny would be a good example of a game that I love to hate. That'd be a good example, because I enjoyed playing the game, but I hated it at its core. Because I could just tell they they didn't put any work into it. Like, and I'm sorry if you're watching this working at Bungie and you're like, we worked hours and hours and hours. Like, I understand being a video game designer is hard, but there's just so many corners that they cut. that It's just unbelievable. Like, all the... Like, a great example is every single boss in Destiny is just a blown-up version of a regular enemy. Like, if you look at what the bosses are, um, and this is, this is not including the DLC, because I haven't played the DLC, but the original game, which, you know, they said they had like a bajillion dollar budget and worked super, super hard on it. All of the bosses are literally, they took a regular enemy and they just made them really big. And they gave them a special gun or whatever. But they even have like the same, like the the first raid boss, when he sends you through time, he actually does the same exact animation as one of the regular enemies does when they kill you. 
and they like they do like a victory pose. It's the same exact pose. Like they they recycled so much stuff in that game, and most of the enemies are just recycled other enemies with a different color or whatever. And so you could just, there's just cut so many corners, and, and and it's not just Bungie. It's all these other game companies do the same thing. It's like they make one level and then they just recycle the same level for the rest of the game and just tweak some things and they're like, oh, this is a video game. <laughs> it's like, this is not video game. This is what you do to make money. Um, and, and, and a lot of game companies have been called out on it and other game companies... And that, that's why indie games... Like, why do you think indie games are so popular? Why do you think, like, Game Informer talks about indie games all the time and PSN talks about indie games all the time and at E3, the, the big story was which... Uh, company is going to have more indie games. It's because indie game developers, it at least seems like they actually care about their games more. Like, it's, un it's, it's ridiculous to think that, but it, it seems true. It's like the big companies seem to just make a game, and as soon as it's done, they're like, alright, next game. Whereas indie companies really support their game and, and give it a life and really think about it in a way that, that makes sense for the consumer. And not just, you know, create a game, create the DLC before you even release the game, and then release the game, and then as you're working on your second game, still you still make money off your first game by releasing DLC every now and then. Like, that's what every big company is doing right now. And, and I think gamers are finally starting to call them out and say, like, look at this indie game, okay? It took them, like, a few days to make, and I enjoy it more than your big Destiny game because they actually care about their fan base, and they actually waited for the game to be released and for the fans to say, hey, this game's really great, but I wish it had more of this, and then they make a DLC that has more of that, and then we buy it and we enjoy it more. So it, it's it's really obnoxious that, that, that game companies will, uh, will do that. But I, I said all that to say this. The reason that, that Final Fantasy X is like my second favorite Final Fantasy is that you can just tell how much work they put into like stuff that you don't the regular gamer won't even see you know like the I'll bed language and the um, uh, the Yevon language they are real languages you could learn an entire dialect you could they, they could you could learn every single letter and actually speak words in I'll bed or in Yevon if you and you could write you know write the language. The um, Albed doesn't actually have a writing as far as I know, it's just um, I'm just gonna attack. I'm gonna keep her MP for that towards. Um, it's not the Albed language is just English mixed up, but the Yevon language actually has an alphabet that you can learn. Um, and, and both of them and like the Albed language, when I first saw it, I thought it was just like I said, like the English language mixed up, and then you just pronounce it like it looks. But it actually has its own pronunciations. Like, if if a word is, you know, A P P A or something, it, you don't necessarily pronounce it Appa like you would in English. It it has like its own dictionary that has different pronunciations depending on where letters go. And they just worked so hard on it when they could have just said, you know, they could have just done something like. Uh, I don't know, going back to Destiny again, you know, if, if an alien race talks, it could just go like, and then they could just be like subtitles that say what he said. Then it could just be random garbage every time that they talk, which is what normal video games do. And I'm not saying every video game should take the time to make their own language, but just the fact that they did ma makes you realize how much they cared about the actual, like, environment that they put their characters in. And then the other reason I really like Final Fantasy X is because of Yuna. Yuna became my favorite character of all time after I played uh, through the game like the third and fourth time doing the NSG and SNO challenge run. Um, I really paid attention to all the dialogue she says and uh, she became my favorite character. She, she just has an incredible story and when you really understand the motivations behind what she does and the way that they decided to kind of push her through the story it's it's truly incredible it's a really great amazing thing and i talked about it and we used to have a podcast we don't do it anymore but we used to have a podcast and one of the podcasts we did was name your top five favorite characters and i had like a long synopsis as to why you know was my favorite character i'll have to do it again sometime 
maybe I'll just make like some video sometime that's just like, this is why Yuna is my favorite character. Because people ask me all the time, because it's a weird character. Sephiroth used to be my favorite character, and then, uh, you know, and that's pretty obvious, like, a lot of people like Sephiroth. Um, I liked him not just because he was, like, really cool, but because of his backstory. Um, but people understand why Sephiroth's your favorite character, but now, when I'm on, you know, live streaming, and someone's like, oh, who's your favorite character, and I say, you know, they're like, what? Please explain. <laughs> it was kind of a weird... People don't usually say Yuna as their favorite character. Maybe their final, their favorite Final Fantasy X character, but certainly not their favorite character of all time. Of like any game series. So, anyways, yeah, that was that was a really long answer, but I guess I had a lot to say about it. 